Welcome guys. This product is called Just Stand Up, kind of Derek Lewis inspired. And I'm gonna try to explain why the uh, having the ability to just stand up really kills a lot of jujitsu. And it took me about 15 years to figure this out. But I wanna break down technically why wrestling works so good in a sense of being able to turtle and stand up in an MMA rule set and why a lot of the skills MMA fighters have and obviously wrestlers will still work very well in a jiu-jitsu setting. Having the ability to stand up and shake guys off, strip grips, is very, very effective in a pure grappling environment as well. So we can't always count on people still going for the seatbelt, right? Obviously guys are much more intelligent with their approach now, <clears throat> and the power half is gonna be a strong sort of tactic for guys from this position, right? Anyone that's jumped on the back and tried to throw in hooks and jumped on a seatbelt has had the horrible situation of just falling over the top, falling completely off. Again, embarrassing, sticks with you a while. So they switch it up. So we'll see a power half here. So just to demonstrate it, right? Matt's on his hands here and um, Spencer's on the back and he uses the power half to really force Matt to basically do a forward roll. And we land in a situation where he's extended. We've stretched him out with the power half. This is the ultimate goal here. Power half is gonna uh, disrupt their ability to posture and climb and extend them out. That's why it's such a powerful move, right? What we can do to address the power half. Let's face, Matt, face your right more. All right, so we're in this situation here, right? Again, we've lost some battles. Spencer is under the far armpit. We've lost that battle. Spencer's got the near side hook. We've lost that battle. What we're gonna do here is essentially the same thing. It's the hip sit again. The hip sit will work for this too. The hip sit is what we use, seatbelt power half. It's what we use when they're not under both arms. But in this situation, if we just sit to a hip, you'll see um, Spencer's still pretty strong in this position here, right? Keep extending this way, face this way. Bring your upper body to me. You can see he's still pretty strong here. It's hard for us to find this elbow. The hips are quite attached here. We're gonna have to add a bit of spice to this move, right? So we come back to the start. We're gonna do, and again, you see these moves very common in grappling. We've already done one knee slice. We're gonna have to do it again. For this situation, again, we're gonna have to add some spice to it, right? We don't wanna just sit down. We're actually gonna hit a knee cut to basically throw Spencer's weight further this way. We have to add a step to do the knee cut. Obviously we need to build a bit of height. If Spencer's already crushing the head hard, what I'll do is I'll place my palm on my forehead like this. Now Spencer cranks the power half. Why is this a bit of time here, right? And it allows us to hit this knee slide towards the camera. It creates a bit more hip separation here, right? So watch this. Matt, do it again by yourself. No Spencer on your back. <clears throat> Probably feels the same anyway, but he's going to take that forehead post. It kind of looks like you're bored. Kind of looks like you're annoyed. You're bothered by the situation. He lifts the leg and he slides hard this way. That means Spencer's weight goes from here and falls off the back. We create a bit more separation between Spencer's hips and our hips. And that attachment is really the issue here. So let's do it with Spencer on the back. <clears throat> if they crank it straight away, we forehead post. Now we create that knee slide motion. And you see it knocks Spencer off the back a little bit. here. Again, let's understand the situation. Spencer's goal is to stretch us out here. If we're lazy, with our shoulder pressure here, or if we overreach here, he stretches us out. He gets basically the exact same thing as if he had hit it from the turtle. What we need to do, I'm gonna get both of you guys to face your heads this way. <clears throat> and we've got that power half. What we're gonna do is we're gonna look to reach for the elbow here. So Spencer starts to, to put a little pressure on with that elbow. We're gonna grab it here. That's gonna buy us some time. Look, where the ground and our forearm is acting as reinforcement, as another form of resistance 
to the power half and it allows us to pummel our head inside it. Once our head is inside, now Spencer can't put any more pressure on the neck. So come back a step. Here, if we don't do anything, they're pressuring our neck and then they can use that to stretch us out. We come back. Here we take a frame on the elbow. Now they try to do it. Now we've got, we're really good structurally here. It's not even using any of our strength. Here, Spencer's having to use body strength to try to fight this. We take that frame and we slide our head inside. This is important here. Now we grab above the elbow. We're pulling that down hard. Spencer can't even let go if he wanted to. Now we're gonna do the exact movement we did before, but what's key here is that we have to watch out for front head attacks. And if our grip on this arm is weak, as we come up, we come up into a straight into a submission here, right? What makes that more difficult is we're not just pulling down on the elbow, we're pulling it towards our hips. And now as we hit this sort of barrel roll movement here, it allows us to pass the underhook inside. That really, really helps us sort of mitigate the front head attack here. So again, you will see jiu-jitsu guys hit the power half. If we hit this escape and we're lazy, they're gonna, they're gonna hit a front head attack. So we pummel, we're lazy here, right into that seated katagatame, potentially even anything could happen here, regular guillotines, whatever. We're in our power half, we reach for the elbow here. That buys us the time to pummel our head inside. That is step one. If we come back, if we just use our right hand to reach for the elbow, that allows them to stretch us out. That compromises our base and our structure because we need to be heavy with the right shoulder here to prevent them from doing this. If they're cranking here, we can do the forehead post again, and then we can find the elbow. Now Spencer's trying to crank, allows us to pass our head inside, pull down, and pop over the top here. Again, we've turned what was really a bad position for us, and we've been able to turn within them. They're trying to make us carry their weight, and obviously if we stay in that turtle position, we're carrying their weight. We carry their weight until they stretch us out and extend us and take a traditional back take. Uh, a traditional back take. What we're doing is we're using their falling body weight against them. We're positioning ourselves in such a way that their weight falls not into us, but off of us onto the ground. Now the ground's carrying their weight, and we take that frame, head inside, grab the elbow. That should be, so that should, you should build that into a really strong habit. Power half is not something you want to fight. You fight power half, you're going to destroy your neck. So we have to try to use where they're applying pressure against them. They want to hit the power half when we're building height or we're trying to shake them off the top in a four point position. Either we're here or we're here. When we're here and we frame on the elbow, now the power half threat is completely jeopardized. We've taken that away from them, allowing us to turn them within, shake them off. Anytime someone is applying falling body weight into us, if we position ourselves correctly, we can shake that weight and use that weight against them.